Um, all right. So just keep going for where we left off, I yeah. guess. All right. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're talking about the buses. So normally, these assignment of these constants is normal in Verilog, and most synthesis tools can synthesize in actual hardware, but the Yosis tools cannot do that. Um, but that's not that big of a problem because like how Verilog is like our C code for uh, describing the behavior of what we want. Um, we could actually drop down to like the inline assembly version of this FPGA language and we call it the device primitives. And uh, Lattice has this document, um, which I'm gonna try opening. So you have down here, we have primitive library for ECP5. And it gives you a list of all these primitives that you can use. So for example, um, you could go to AND3 and then there's the description of AND3. It could be used in all these FPGAs, and it's this thing with uh, three inputs and an output. And uh, you can in instantiate this directly in the code. Uh, normally, in, you would in Verilog do uh, A and B and C, you know, is assigned to Z, but you can actually just call this block directly. And so that's what we kind of have to do for um, the tri-state buffer. Hang on. Yeah. Is the AND3 a thing that's like built into the chip or is this a little like Verilog we will build it out of the AND gates for you? It's um, the chip knows how to make AND3s out of its lookup tables. Okay. And so you're telling it I want an AND3 and then the um, like all the routing tools later will use its LUTs to make an AND3, but it knows how to make an AND3. Um, it knows how to, this is just telling you everything it can make internally. Okay. When, you, when you're writing Verilog, it's, you're inferring these things actually. These get translated into these primitives. So yeah. The synthesis will just, if the synthesis engine knows about this, it's going to use them when it can. If it doesn't know, it will just make them up out of it. So, so what is it, how does this impact like the resources of the chip? You remember all these tiny modules? Yeah, yeah. So they have these things and each of them has this. Okay. So the more these special things you use, the best it is because you make the LUT free from other stuff. That's okay, that's it, so, so you have like Verilog, then you have these things, and then you have the lookup tables and flip flops. It's like that kind of hierarchy. Well, these are hardware, like real stuff, external to the lens. These are real hardware? <laughs> really? Yeah, from, from what I understood, they are really good on this case. Okay. So you didn't know that? No, so I didn't I, know that. I mean, that's the way I understood it. That explains why I was confused. I mean, I may be wrong. I okay. Understood okay. It. I mean, the, for the purposes of this, I, it doesn't matter, but yeah. but uh, yeah, so like the, this it's like the assembly language version of, so, so we can actually uh, find the primitive that we want, which is this uh, buffer, this uh, bi bi-directional buffer. It has a truth table. Um, and so this is all in that document. And then the IO usage guide can actually, it gives you an example on how to put this in your Verilog code to actually explicitly define one of these things. So this is the example they give in this usage guide. Um, and so, okay. Um, so it's using the LUTs. Yeah, it does and other stuff around, and it knows that you to do that to use the least amount of that. Yeah. It, 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 like, glues everything together. It's, it's like using um, uh, the LUTs and flip-flops are, like, the state machines, but the instructions of the assembly language are these things. It's primitives. It's like another step down. 
You still look confused. Well, yes, because it's not as simple as I was thinking it would be. I thought it was either like it's just a bunch of hardware stuff that can be only used for the AND gates, for the three AND, is that what you call it, AND three? AND three, yeah, that's, that's. Um, now what I'm hearing is like, well, you, you can make an AND three out of these things, or you can make some other things out of these things. Yes. But it's also, there's still some benefit to using these because they're more efficient than the, I'm not using it because it's efficient. Um, I'm using it because I'm, I would probably never use an AND3. I would write in a Verilog, A and B and C is assigned to Z. Okay. But if I do that in Verilog, the, ver well, the synthesis tools be like, and three, boom. Okay. And then the other tools underneath that will be like, oh, an and three, I could build that with this LUT, this LUT, and this LUT, and glue them together. And then, uh, then you have your actual working thing at the end. I don't know. Does that make sense? Or? Yeah, it, it, it's the, the tools are optimizing the stuff for you. Yes. Okay, um, okay so there's this buffer we can use to, to get our uh, tri-state logic if we want. So now uh, I'm going to use this to do an example of state machines, which is like very fundamental in making like FPGA sequential logic. Um, so you have like a clock signal that kind of moves you between states. But uh, here, here's the circuit we're going to kind of build. And the idea behind this circuit is um, this GPIO we could put it as a logic high, a logic zero, or a high Z, and that we're going to get different behavior out of this LED. Uh, we're going to get three different states we can physically see. Um, so the idea is when uh, this pin is a one, it's connected to 3.3 .3 volts. And so this is basically a short to here. So this LED is getting bypassed. It's going to all go through here and down to here. And if you have to do A2C, I2C, for example, on your FPGA, you will need that because your device has to show that when the other one is talking. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's a really good example of a tri-state. Uh, you want to go into the high Z state. So yeah, if this is a 1, this will be 3.3 .3 volts. Uh, the LED should be off. And then if this is a zero, the LED will be on because you have current through the LED going through this resistor and this resistor. So you're going to get quite a bit of current. It's going to be really bright. But then if you disconnect this pin, make it high Z, this resistor is no longer in the picture and you just have this flow. And it's a lot less current. So it's going to be a much dimmer resist, uh, LED brightness. Does that make sense? Finally something I can <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, that it's all explained here. Um, so now we need to define our states. Like one really, probably the best choice in my opinion to de define your states. You want like easy to, to use state names when you're writing your code. So um, use this local param keyword. You'll make a, a state definition and then uh, all of these are gonna be two bits because the max number of states we have is three. So two to the four. Or two to the two is four, so that's enough uh, bits to hold all our states. So, and then I have a register that's going to be uh, storing our current state. And so we're going to divide the clock down to something we can more easily manage. So I'm going to go down to uh, 10 hertz, so our 100 milliseconds. And then I'm going to need something to. Uh, like a little like a little counter because I kind of still want to go a little bit slower and and this gives you the flexibility so you could change stuff later on so um, so to make a state machine we use the Verilog case statement which is similar to like a C case switch switch case case switch I don't remember what it's called um, <coughs> So you have uh, an expression, and then you have your matching cases, default statements. Uh, they have an example here. It's linked if you want to take a look at it further. Uh, but we'll use uh, the Verilog case statement. And then I drew like a kind of just simple state diagram, which is very simple of what we're going to do. We're going to start 
in the state off. Um, we're going to have enable high, which means the pin is enabled. It's not tri-state. It's not high Z. And we're going to put the LED in a, in a 3.3 state. And then we're going to wait 500 milliseconds. And then we're going to move to the dim state. We're going to do what we need to make it dim, wait 500 milliseconds, and then do what we need to do to make it bright, loop back, repeat indefinitely. So that's the code here. Um, this is all the code. And then if you, uh, uh, one, one thing I uh, didn't mention here is um, with this uh, primitive thing, that we didn't talk about this before. Um, when you define modules, you could either try to match the order of the, um, the, the input output uh, ports to how the module is defined, or they give you an alternate way where you can do a dot, the name of the, uh, the port uh, within the module, and then what you connect to that port in parentheses. And the nice thing about this is if you don't need to use O or I, you could just specify a T and a B and leave the others disconnected. It's also good it's for not like accidentally mixing up the order and accidentally connecting like an input to an output and like screwing up your wiring basically. Um, and so that's what I did here. Um, here's. Yeah, they're going to write it with the imports um, or the input. The ports are mapped with that dot command. Um, and then here's, here's the state machine. Um, it's uh, just one always block. We got our case statement and we start, uh, state off. We already uh, have it initialized to state off. And then we just set our enables, decrement the counter. If the counter is zero, we uh, reset our our counter for the next wait cycle and then we move it to state dim and then on the next clock cycle we're at state dim and then we stay here for 500 milliseconds till this counter expires and then we move to state bright and then we set up state bright and so we're just doing this over and over and over again it's going to loop back just like in the diagram and then uh i'm connecting it to this that uh bb primitive which gives me the tri-state uh, the one thing to note about that is T is, is, is an input that means tri-state, so it's kind of like an active low enable. So you have to invert the enable signal with the little invert. Um, and then the last thing I did that was a little bit different that we haven't done yet is you can set the drive strength of an out output pin to, incre to decrease the uh, on resistance of the pin so you can actually drive more current out of it. Um, but you just got to be careful. You have, each bank of I.O. on these things have a maximum current spec. Um, so you just got to not violate that. That's in the data sheet. So, yeah, that's, that's this project. And, yeah, if you wire it up and build it, you can probably get it to work. I know one person got it to work. <laughs> Did you get your thing to build? Yeah. Yeah, I got the. 